Good afternoon and welcome back to the Lynn Lowdown. I'm Danny Vittori and today we have on representatives from both my brother's table and the Clay School. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. So real quick, I have now have the guests introduce themselves because me and names do not always work. So you mind going? Hi, I'm Diane Krusha Hills and I'm the executive director of my brother's table. Awesome. And I'm Kim Allison and I am an instructor at the Clay School. So we are here to talk about the amazing collaboration between your two organizations and several others as well for your Empty Bowls fundraiser coming up next week. So do we want to uh, give a little bit of like, like what is that? Sure. It's actually the first time we've had an Empty Bowls event. There are um, many hunger organizations use them as a way to raise money. And um, ours is going to be at the Lynn Museum. And admission um, to our event includes admission to the museum. And people will come. They'll have a simple meal, soup, salads, uh, bread rolls, that kind of thing, and dessert. Um, we'll have a cash bar from um, Bentwater Brewing Company. And um, there'll be live music and lawn games. And everybody who comes to the event will get um, a handmade ceramic bowl, like one of these. Uh, and the idea is that it's... Um, both a memento of the evening, but also uh, an empty bowl as a reminder of the folks in the community who have empty bowls at home and maybe don't have enough to eat. So it's both a combination of a serious um, problem, which is hunger, but also an enjoyable evening to help us raise money to fund our organization. Mm -hmm. And the ceramic bowls are where you and it's the It's where we come in, come in yes. yes. We're a um, really community-oriented studio, and our students love to make, and pretty much all Clay students love to share what they make. So it was really just a great opportunity for that one of our students brought us to get involved with such a really amazing cause. So we had our students um, choose to make and donate whatever they wanted, and you can see kind of the range that, that you get. So many different things. Oh, it's de it is. It's definitely very impressive. So all the things they're able to create, I would not be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. And I'll switch back for a second to my brother's table, because I didn't realize you're privately funded. So fundraisers like this are how you're able to get yeah. the money to support what you do. It's the only way. We get money to uh, run our organization. We um, were founded by a group of folks who really believe strongly that we should be a hospitality charity, which means... Anybody can come for any reason. We don't have any rules. We don't have any, like, you have to make this much of money or you have to have this many kids. If you need something to eat, you can come. Um, because we do that, uh, we want to be able to do it in the manner we want to do it. So a lot of times with government grants, you have to serve only a specific population or you have to ask people a lot of questions. And we try to approach it like if you came to someone's house for dinner, you wouldn't say, how much money do you make? Do you have a disability? <laughs> how many kids do you have? So um, our idea is that you can just come and get, if you're hungry, come get something to eat. And so by having fundraisers, we can raise the money to do the work that we want to do in the way that we believe is the way we should be doing it. And Empty Bowls is an idea that's happened in other communities. It, what drew you to collaborate with others, the Clay School and others, to do one here? I think one of the nice things about Lynn um, that I've really grown to appreciate over the years is that even though Lynn's a big city, it's over 100,000 people, it's a very tight-knit community, and people really um, like to participate in community activities, and also just like people really care about their neighbors in Lynn, even though it is a city. Yeah. and. I think this is a great example of that, is that you know there's a local school that does amazing work, but they're also part of a community. They're not just like an artist group or we're just a you know, service agency. There's a nice melding between the arts and service. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and I'll ask you a similar thing, like the Clay School getting involved. Like, how does it feel getting your students involved in something like this? We love getting our students involved in these kind of causes. We've actually supported um, Empty Bowls events for, I think, 17 years now uh, in different communities. Mostly in Gloucester was always the closest one to us. So when one of our students, I actually don't know how she found out about it, but when one of our students found out about it and brought it to us, everybody was really excited because our community is 
it's actually like all of the North Shore. So, I mean, we have people from Marblehead, Swampscott, Salem, Lynn, Melrose, all over the place um, coming together in our little community. And I think the opportunity to help a larger community that is part of Lynn, where we have our um, clay school, was just really appealing to everybody. Um, and I think a lot of the students, I mean, they picked some of their best work to, to send over too, which I think is fantastic. How, do you know offhand how many bowls are actually made? Or it's okay if you don't. By the sure. Clay School, seventy-seven. Yeah. Wow. Okay. that's how many I was told we donated. So, and I think I think we have about two hundred altogether from the schools and that's from, awesome. um, from the Clay School as well. Yeah. yeah. And all the food is donated as well, correct? Yep. Even? All the food's donated, and um, a bunch of different local folks. Um, and some of the larger organizations like um, Kettle Cuisine on the Linway, they're mm -hmm. donating some I think three or four different kinds of soup. And yeah, it really is a community uh, coming together. And in a lot of ways, it reflects how we do our business because the meals we serve at the table, it's the same thing. It's donated food, it's people's mm -hmm. donated time, it's yeah. neighbors sort of helping other neighbors. So it's very similar to how we, how we do our day-to-day -day work. And you say it's a very symbolic thing too, a literal empty bowls so you hope to raise awareness about food insecurity. Yeah, I think I, there was a local, um, the Boston Globe had an article probably about three or four weeks ago about a big study they did in Massachusetts, um, the Greater Boston Food Bank and Mass General Brigham did a study of food insecurity. And what they found is one in three people in Massachusetts um, don't have enough food to eat. Wow. And Wow. That's pretty shocking. I mean, that's pretty shocking. That is shocking. That's, that's yeah. the state I didn't know that at all. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's the worst, the numbers I've ever seen them. And it's interesting because Lynn is a poorer community than Massachusetts as a whole. So you can probably imagine in Lynn, it's probably more than one in three. But even if it's one in three, that's 33,000 people who that's probably huge. don't have enough oh. to eat in this community. So. So you want to draw the awareness to it. And for people who might be interested in getting a ticket, signing up, where would they go to do that? Super easy. It's on our website. Um, and you just click on it, and you can buy a ticket right then. We uh, looks like we probably will still have some tickets at the door the night of. So if people are kind of waiting to find out the last minute they can come, um, you're certainly welcome to come to the door and buy a ticket at the door as well. Great. So it sounds like... A uh, fantastic fundraiser. I said I'd love to be able to come and do it. And you mentioned a little bit about the live music too. So do you know who'd be coming for that? It's a band called the Distant Ships, um, and I I think they play like different decades of music. So it should be something that everybody will hear something they like. Um, and then there'll be some long games like cornhole and I don't know what other. But we have a giant Jenga game and stuff. Oh, that's <laughs> Yeah. And then you can go, if you haven't seen the museum, it's a great excuse it to go check out the museum. museum. Yeah, it's an awesome museum. So. And a great collaboration, and I'll flip back to you for a second. You mentioned your students. I didn't think of students as sometimes younger kids. Are they all, or is it open to anybody? No, our school is very, very open to anybody. We do have some kids-only classes, but actually most of our studio is adults, and we oh. have everybody from you know high schoolers all the way to... Um, retirees and everything in between and um, we have classes for everything from beginners to more advanced people we have artists and residents spaces for people who maybe don't need a class but want to come in and be part of the community our goal is pretty much to just welcome anybody who's interested in clay and in having a part in an arts community like ours mm -hmm. I remember I've been to the Lady Pinkham building mm -hmm. once, and it is, it's amazing there. Yeah. My brother's table, too. You run an incredible organization there with so many volunteers. And uh, before we wrap this up, I want to ask is there anything that I didn't mention or anything else that you wanted to say about your organizations or the fundraiser? I mean, I think the other thing I'll just add is that um, in June, we served our 7 millionth meal, which is a wow. lot of meals. Wow. Um, and before the pandemic, so in, by two th sorry, between 1982 um, and 2019, we had served 3.2 million meals. So the bulk of our meals we've actually served in the past three and a half years, which wow. is kind of bonkers. Um, we saw a lot of changes during COVID, a lot of new faces, and those people have stuck with us, which is great. Um, 
I mean, it's unfortunate the need is so great, but um, it's also nice that people who may have tried us during the pandemic have decided, oh, our food is really good. We have an amazing chef. She makes delicious food. So um, it's nice that people are still coming, and, but it is a lot. So um, that's why we do the fundraisers. We're really happy to have this partnership, and we hope that we can continue it for future years if you guys are doing the fundraiser again or anything like that, because our students loved it, and I'm sure we get even more participation next time. That's great. Great. And I want to thank both of you again for coming on to talk about it, raise awareness of it. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you. Welcome anytime. And once again, I'm Danny Vittori. This has been the Lynn Lowdown, and we'll see you next week with more guests.